Let's speak now to uh, Peter Kalmus, who is a climate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and he joins us now from Chapel Hill in North California. Welcome to TRT World. So uh, you're a climate scientist at uh, NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. You use satellite data, I understand, and uh, models to study the rapidly changing Earth. What are you seeing with regards to Spain? Well, so um, first of all, I should say I'm speaking on my own behalf. Um, the way I think of extreme heat is uh, sort of like popcorn popping all over the world. And you don't know exactly where or when you're going to have an extreme heat wave like this. But with uh, planetary mean temperatures heating up because primarily of burning fossil fuels, uh, that whole the whole kind of ceiling, the whole I'm sorry, the whole floor gets higher. And then the popcorn that happens, it's uh, when you get an extreme heat event in a certain place, uh, it's going to be more intense. Um, it's going to start coming, like going over dangerous thresholds more frequently. So, um, you know, it's, it's no surprise that as the planet heats up from burning fossil fuels, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see uh, more extreme heat. We're going to see it coming early. We're going to see it becoming more intense and we're going to see the impacts of it worsening. So... No surprise then, you'd say so, because right now that uh, 40 degrees Celsius for April in Spain is, is not normal. It's uh, 7 to 11 degrees above average for this time of year. Talk to us about, you, put, you mentioned it, uh, the relationship between this kind of weather and climate change. Yeah, so, okay, so we know that the planet right now is about 1.3 degrees Celsius on average. That's for the mm -hmm. whole surface uh, above where it would be if we hadn't burned uh, all of these billions of tons of, uh, of fossil fuels and added them into the atmosphere. Um, it's about twice that over land, and some places it's it's even more than uh, twice that. We, we're seeing extreme uh, heating in the Arctic, for example, and then you know sometimes uh, that extra energy can be focused in particular places. You can get heat waves uh, just like we had before climate change, but now they're they're even more powerful and. I would say extreme heat is probably the thing that keeps me up uh, the most at mm -hmm. night. It's the thing that's driving all of these other impacts. Uh, your reporter mentioned the droughts yeah. and the wildfires and the, the, the strains on our agricultural system. So extreme heat, uh, we feel it in our bodies, and then it ripples through all the other systems that our society depends on. And, um, and to me, yeah, it's quite terrifying, actually. Indeed, and especially because it kills... So many people, there was a recent EU report saying that uh, the impact of uh, the heat waves last year killed more than 20,000 people. I mean, that is, uh, I mean, what, what do you make of that figure and what we could possibly see uh, this year? Right. So there's, it's an act, it's an area of very active research, um, trying to kind of map out the future of extreme heat and extreme humid heat, because humidity plays a key role as well. Uh, that's what makes it really feel like you can't even breathe. Um, and so, uh, you know, I personally think, and I think the research is starting to come in that, you know, this, well, <laughs> the planet's getting hotter, right? About a tenth of a degree Celsius on average every five years right now. And so the heat will become much more extreme. Um, I think this is still the just the barest beginnings of what we're going to be experiencing in the next few years and, and then even in the next few decades. Uh, in my own research, if we if we hold uh, the emissions, if we if we mitigate emissions, if we end emissions very, very aggressively, if we kind of go into a climate emergency mode, uh, every nation as a global society, um, then what will happen is temperatures will peak around the end of the century, um, and then they'll start going down. Uh, that aggressive mitigation is even more aggressive than what's been kind of mapped out so far in Paris, uh, the Paris Agreement. But if we uh, prioritize economic growth around the world and uh, deprioritize uh, ending global heating and ending the fossil fuel industry, uh, we can see heat that, that gets worse far beyond the 21st century. Uh, probably, uh, you know, this is scary stuff, but in that scenario, if we don't mitigate aggressively, uh, I think that we could see parts of the planet becoming actually uninhabitable for humans. Peter, I'm, no, I'm not surprised this keeps you up at night, uh, really. <laughs> very. Thank you so much. Uh, really a pleasure to have you on the program. That's uh, Peter Kalmus, uh, climate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Thank you so much.